Is the face mask you're wearing effectively preventing the spread of COVID-19? NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn says you can test it out. All you need is a birthday candle. With so many face coverings to choose from, researchers at Duke University wanted to know which ones actually work to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Start. They asked people to talk into a specially designed box to test different fabrics and masks. We had people say, stay healthy people five times. And you can just start seeing the particles growing and growing in the box. Watch what happens to the droplets from a single sentence. Stay healthy, people. Researchers say the N95 mask, which should be reserved for healthcare workers, captured all the droplets. Cloth masks and disposable masks were 80 to 90 percent effective. Bandanas caught only 50 percent, but the gator they tested, zero percent effective. That's right, zero. Droplets easily pass through the thin material of the gator, and researchers say those droplets were split into many more smaller ones. This might be a problem if the particles carry disease and they stay in the air longer, the smaller they are. That gives them more of a chance to be inhaled by someone else and perhaps infect someone else. That's right. Dr. Eric Westman says the study used a single layer gator made of 92 percent polyester and 8 percent spandex. And he acknowledges not all gators are the same. These single layer stretchy things you can see through, we don't think they're doing much. And more research needs to be done on this. But clearly the gator and the bandana did not block the particles as well as the cotton the surgical, the N95. To protect yourself and others from contracting coronavirus, the CDC recommends a basic face covering over your nose and mouth. It can be something as simple as a disposable mask, or if it's a cloth mask, you just want to make sure it has two layers. And scientists say you can check to see how effective your mask or face covering is with a simple trick. Just light a candle and see if you can blow it out while wearing the face covering. I definitely can't do it with this two-layer cotton mask. <laughs> I cannot. But what about with this single-layer gator? I'm going to hold the candle at the same distance. <sighs> Whoa. Super easy. It went right out. Let's see what happens when I double up the fabric of the gator. So now I've got two layers. <sighs> with two layers, I can still blow it out if I try. What's your message to folks who are wearing these and thinking that they're doing the job? Just make sure that it's a double layer and we think that's better than the single layer. Uh, my best advice would be to just get a mask that works. And as we showed you in this demonstration in June, masks are effective in capturing droplets that contain bacteria and possibly coronavirus. <coughs> when I coughed wearing three different face coverings, no bacteria grew on these Petri dishes. But look at what happened when I coughed without a mask. Plenty of bacterial growth. Vicky joins me now. Vicky, I did that test this morning. It was so cool. Same results. All the masks in our house passed, except for one that was a single layer of fabric and a gator. Anything else you could do to see if your mask is effective or any guidance for people when they're, they're looking to get a new mask? Yeah, if you don't have a candle on hand or matches, just take your mask or your face covering. In this case, I've got a gator similar to the one I showed you in that story. Mm -hmm. Single layer made of that same 92% polyester, 8% spandex. Just hold it up to a light or daylight outside. The more light that you see coming through, the less protection that that face covering is going to afford you. And let's not get hung up on this idea of it's, is it a gator, is it a mask? It's really all about the material. So you want a material that is going yeah. to be thick enough to protect you and to protect others, but still allow you to breathe. Vicki, you should have seen what was going on in my house today when I was walking around with masks and a lit birthday candle. I think everyone thought I was I nuts, it. but it's a really great test. Yeah, and, and good to know. I was pleased to know that most of the masks we had uh, passed the test. So that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, another question for you. The FDA just approved a new kind of mask. What can you tell us about yeah. it? 
Yeah, this is so cool. So this is the, according to the company, it's literally called the Clear Mask and Clear Mask Company says this is the oh, wow. world's first FDA cleared transparent mask. They've got two versions. One is surgical. This one that I have is the one they sell to consumers. It goes for uh, twenty a pack of 24 for $67. So a little under $3 per mask. It may be steep if you don't need 24 masks, but some families told me on social media, they're just basically teaming up with other families and splitting the cost. Something else I like about it, I'm going to show you how it works too. Really easy. You slip it on just like this and check it out. This was developed by a deaf woman who had trouble communicating with her healthcare providers. She worked with folks at Johns Hopkins University and came up with this. And you can see it doesn't fog up. It's actually quite comfortable to wear. And you can tighten it in the back so that it's got a snugger fit on the side. Some people were asking me, well, it seems like air can still get in through the side. That's not really a major concern when you talk to infectious disease experts and people who specialize in aerosols, and that's because think about it, unless someone's coming up and coughing or sneezing right here, what you're really worried about is those droplets coming at you when people are talking or coughing or sneezing near you, those droplets will fall to the ground. They're not gonna go up here and come into the side and then get inhaled by you. So this is great protection, especially for folks that are working with people who are deaf or hard of hearing, or maybe you're a teacher and you're teaching kids how to read and they really need to see your mouth and your lips and how to make those letter sounds. This could be a fantastic donation for a lot of schools out there. Absolutely. And Vicki, let's not forget about news reporters. Great for all of our NBC staff that's out there uh, reporting. And, and, you know, it's easier to understand, to see, to speak. That's really, really cool. Uh, Vicki, thank you so much. Great test today. Great info. Really appreciate it. I love it. I'm so glad you tried it out at home to see how it worked. And were you surprised when you blew through the single layer mask or the gator that the candle just went right out? It went out immediately. I was also really frustrated, but I know this was a good thing when I had a better mask on that I wasn't able to blow the candle out, but really reassuring that, that they're more Absolutely. Effective. Super easy test. Great mask, Vicky. A great test. Right. That clear mask is really cool. Thanks so much. A new warning from the CDC, get a flu shot this year so that we're not hit with two major outbreaks at the same time. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Kavita Patel joining me now. Dr. Patel, thanks for being here with us on a Friday. Uh, what concerns does the CDC have about what some health experts are calling a possible twindemic here? Yeah, Allison, good to be with you. Happy Friday. And the twindemic fear is really the fact that we could have kind of a second wave or a worsening of this first wave of coronavirus at the same time that the flu season could be at its peak. So that's really what the twindemic refers to. And the CDC is really urging all Americans to get their flu shot as early as possible. And as a physician, normally what we recommend is kind of waiting until, you know, maybe September, October, so you can have six months of immunity. But we're really trying to get people in as fast as possible. And the United States has asked flu, manu flu vaccine manufacturers to increase their manufacturing by 10 to 15 percent to accommodate the need. Dr. Patel, the CDC says that black and Hispanic communities often have the lowest flu vaccination rate. Now, we know these groups have also been hit hardest by the coronavirus. What can public health officials do? How can they make sure that everyone who needs a flu shot can get one, uh, especially people who may also uh, be dealing with higher instances of COVID-19 in their communities? Yeah, that's a great question, Allison. So one thing that the Trump administration just did about 24 hours ago is they expanded the ability of pharmacists to be able to give vaccines to children from the ages of 3 to 18 with training. They can give vaccines to adults. And what this means is that there's more convenient points of access to get a flu shot for populations that have been really affected, as you point out, we need to be incredibly proactive. Allison, I am a big fan of getting, you know, the car share, ride share uh, vendors, Uber and Lyft, to have like someone who can come and go to like apartment buildings and vaccinate a huge number of people. We're going to have to get creative. Drive through testing at COVID has become a familiarity. We should be doing drive through flu shots, so it's as convenient as possible. That's the key. 
I love this I idea, love going door to door, making sure people get their shots. Uh, Dr. Patel, Massachusetts is the first state to mandate flu shots for all kids going back to school. What advice do you have for parents when it comes to the flu vaccine, particularly a parent who might say, I haven't had to vaccinate my child or get them a flu shot before. What do I do? Yeah, look, here is actually where I think science is really what you need to look for as a parent. Um, the flu every year at its peak, Allison, can have a million people hospitalized. And in really bad years, we've had 66,000 deaths in a year from the flu. And by the way, that's in really young people and in really older people. So what I would tell any parent is that under the age of two, at any age, they really should talk to their health care provider or get on like one of those phone lines so you can do it when it's convenient after work on a weekend and ask about how you can get the flu shot. If you're under the age of two in general, you might need two shots. And so you should talk about what that means mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. child. Okay. And then, and then if you're an older adult, there's actually kind of what we call a high dose flu vaccine, which we administer. And I think that's appropriate. But here's the good news, Allison. We're all bracing across the country, clinics, pharmacies for these questions. We're getting our flu shots in and we're ready to give them out. Dr. Patel, kids have been called silent spreaders of COVID-19. We know their symptoms can often be different than adults, maybe less noticeable. They may be asymptomatic. What are some of the things that parents should be watching for once they send their kids back to school? Signs that they might be sick with the coronavirus. Uh, yeah, what things might present themselves first? Yeah, th well, the, the thing that really is most common in children has been somewhat similar to adults. So it's everything you mentioned with fever or a cough. And again, the reason we want people to get their flu shots is those are also common co like cold symptoms and flu symptoms as well, by the way. Um, but we've heard now, you've heard about COVID toes and you've seen that there are sometimes some skin manifestations of coronavirus. So if your child has a rash mm -hmm. that you don't recognize, or if you take a picture and can send it to your pediatrician and they say, bring that child in and get tested, those can be initial clues. But here's the ultimate test. If you're a parent and your child is just not acting like they normally do, not as hungry, not as sleepy or sleeping you know, too little or too much, I think those are all reasons to pick up the phone and make a phone call. And we're on alert for all of these symptoms. But again, it tends to be the more common ones, fever, cough, kind of chills, and then some of these rashes and unusual kind of you know, COVID manifestations on the skin. Mm -hmm. Dr. Patel, some of those symptoms sound very flu-like. Is there a chance that people who have COVID-19 could be misdiagnosed with the flu or vice versa? Or yeah, is that not likely to happen? No, you're, this is, and, and not just that, Allison, everything I told you, if you have a really bad cold, which is kind of can come from a number of viruses, including the cousin to mm -hmm. the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, you can also have those same symptoms. So that's one of the reasons that I think um, educators and employers are a little nervous because we could be going into kind of a bad cold and flu season with those exact same symptoms mimicking the coronavirus. Um, but what we have are tests, again, those diagnostic tests where we put the Q-tip in the nose or get your saliva. That will ultimately be what we need to use to make the diagnosis. We have tests for the flu, tests for the coronavirus, and that'll make the distinction. And I also want to say that what you just showed with Vicki about the masks, I think that if more people are wearing masks, we might actually see a decrease in kind of the severity of cold and flu season like we've seen in the Southern hemisphere of the globe. And that would be great news, Allison. We could just see a decrease all around. It certainly would. And how cool are those uh, new clear masks? I thought those were awesome. <laughs> I, I want one. I was I was literally thinking like, wait a minute, I want to get one of those. So I got to We got to do things like that to get people to wear them. I agree. <laughs> We've all been saying it here. We got to get our hands on some of those and, and share the love with everybody at NBC. Dr. Patel, it is always a joy to have you on. Thanks for being with us and have a safe and healthy weekend. You too. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.